We all want love. We all need love. But do you know true love? Not the poster on the wall. Not the puppy eyes and that all. Not the dreams that fizzle and fade. Not the crush that always stayed. Not the momentary blinking time. Not the throng of love bells chime. Not the love that lets you down. Not the love that sees you drown. Love that picks you up and takes your place. Love that keeps you running the race. Love that's not just a fuzzy wuzzy feel. Love that's true. Love that's real. Love who sat down at the meal. Love who knew the 30 silver deal. Love who drank the wine and ate the bread. Knew the blood that he would shed. Who prayed and cried and drops he bled. Then stood in silence as they led him to the place to be mocked and teased. Waited as the murderer was freed. Questioned and sentenced, though Pilate believed, believed he was the Christ, not just the King of the Jews, that he was the one the prophets had previewed, but sent him off and let the crowd choose to nail him through his feet and hands, breathed his last as darkness spread over the lands, the Son of God killed by human plans. But was it their plan? Or did God always know that to rescue his people, he become lowest of low. Die the worst death that the Romans could think. Defeat the sin barrier, build a bridge to link. You see, Jesus, this man, he died sin free, taking the punishment from you and from me, because God is so holy, so pure and so clean. Our sin and our stain, it comes in between. We deserve to die on a cross, mocked and punished like he. But he did it for us, so we can live eternally. And do you know what? He didn't just die, take our punishment and be done. He rose to defeat death, so all our battles are won. He gives us peace in the face of the grave, hope for our future, no longer sin slave, and love the truest anyone's ever gave, the greatest love ever known. He didn't just die for his allies or look out for his own. He died for his enemies, he came for his foe. He died even for us, though we shout, No! Go away, God. I don't want you. Get out my way. I'll live for my money. My pleasure today. No, God. Shove off. And don't interfere. You spoil my street crud. Make an awkward atmosphere. Yet he died for you two, for me too, for us too, so that when we come to him, he'll be waiting there for you, to give you love that's real and love that's true. The greatest love this world has ever known, the love that Jesus Christ has shown, a love that he gives to be your own. So this Easter, let the love hole in your heart be healed by the love that is true and the love that is real. Hello everybody and happy Easter from all of us here at SBSJ in Hereford. I know, we're delighted to have you with us and what a wonderful week it's been. The sun's oh, been the weekend's shiny. been amazingly beautiful and mm. sunny, hasn't it? I hope you're uh, enjoying your weekend so far. Got some time in the garden doing all those bank holiday weekend jobs. Yeah, well many of our church uh, people have been busy in our church decorating all the flowers ready for Easter Sunday. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll get some photos on later so you can see if you're not able to be with us this morning. Great. But I'm looking forward to this morning. It's, a, it's an amazing day to be with you and we are excited to hear the word a bit later on from our friend Mark. Which is yeah, very we'll exciting. introduce him a bit more later. Yeah. Uh, but um, first, shall I read what it is we're celebrating That'd on this Easter weekend? Great start. So uh, this is from John, uh, the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, and it's starting at verse 1 and it says, The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb, both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them. I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Would you like to pray? And then we're going to have the, uh, the classic pray. Easter uh, hymn that, for me, it's not Easter without this hymn. So there be thine be the glory. It is thine be the glory. Great. It really well, should is. we just pray and just thank God this morning? Father God, we just thank you that you are alive. We just thank you that we can celebrate this message today. Be with us as we learn something amazing about you. Thank you for your goodness and thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. Amen.
Wow, what a wonderful hymn to start our worship this morning. Thine be the glory. It's such a classic, but it just it holds is. so many values and so many words, which I'm sure are ring true for us this Easter. And, and it means this especially more as well, because I remember when we were in West Brom and we did a lot of work at the YMCA, that's their hymn as well. That's mm-hmm. their like anthem as a YMCA is Thine be the glory. Uh, and it sums up everything really, doesn't it? The Easter is about mm-hmm. it's giving God the glory in everything. And he that so we do. deserves it. So are we going to hear another reading? We are, yeah. And then we've got uh, someone speaking for the first time, which is very exciting. Um, Over these last few years, we've been really uh, lucky to welcome into our community at St. Peter's, uh, Mark and Ellen. And Mark just does incredible work uh, through his job, um, particularly uh, supporting Ukrainian refugees and um, uh, and the earthquake in Turkey as well. He goes all around the world. Yeah, he just does amazing work. And so we're really excited to have him speaking for you for the first time. If you do see him up and out and about at St. Peter's or even down at St. James when he pops down, give him a shout and say hi to him. And I'm sure you would love that. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you've got to say a little bit later on. So should we listen from Acts? Yeah, so our second passage for today is from uh, uh, the book of Acts. And this is kind of so after uh, Jesus has been ascending to heaven and the early church is existing. And this is Peter who goes to the home of a Roman uh, centurion called Cornelius. And this is what he has to say when explaining the gospel to him. He says, then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts those from every nation who fear him do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of his sins through His name. Here's Mark. My name is Mark Dykens and I'm married to my beautiful wife, Ellen. As you may hear from my Dinglish accent, that is Dutch English, both my wife and I are from the Netherlands and we moved here some 21 years ago. We're really thankful to call Hereford our home and St. Peter's our church. This morning I woke up early to not miss the glorious sunrise here in Grafton, close to where we live. And if I timed it well, You may see the sun rise behind me as we reflect on what happened more than 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus. This morning we have read about the famous gospel passage from the book of John, chapter 20, verse 1 to 18, which describes the scene after Jesus' crucifixion and his death at the cross at Golgotha. In the past weeks during Lent, we have contemplated on Jesus' journey to the cross and how he prepared for his final journey up to Jerusalem his betrayal, his suffering, and how he carried his cross to Golgotha, how he was nailed to a cross and put on public display for all to see his shame, his rejection, his suffering, and eventually his death. And the good news of Jesus' resurrection is a bittersweet account of how a life of calling, devotion, persecution, suffering, and eventually a cruel death on a cross led to the biggest victory of mankind where God sacrificed his one and only son to die completely alone and pay the price for our sins. Can you imagine the scene at Golgotha where Jesus' disciples and his followers were in the crowd with those who ridiculed him, who blasphemed him, the son of God, the religious leaders who were happy to see Jesus hanging there, no longer having to deal with his self-proclaimed son of God, who brought uncomfortable truth and revelation each time that he taught in the temple. The Roman authorities thought that they finally dealt with this radical Jesus who turned over the tables in the temple and he introduced a new kind of kingdom with many followers, which was a threat to their authority and influence in society. 
But no one realized at the time is that this was all part of God's plan and that the big reveal was about to happen. It is three days later, the third day after Jesus died at the cross. The crowd left Golgotha and returned to the order of the day, each to their own. And Jesus had been buried in a tomb near Golgotha. A wealthy man, Joseph of Arimathea, acquired the tomb for Jesus' burial and was given permission to take his body and bury him in the tomb. It is quiet in the garden, still dark as the sun has not yet risen. Stillness before the storm. It's not long before Jerusalem wakes up. There is something different about this morning. Something that just took place that would change the course of history forever. The world did not know it yet, but Jesus rose from the dead. He removed his linen wrappings, folded the cloth that covered his head, and he put it to one side. Then Jesus walked out of the tomb and into the garden. I work for a Christian organization that also produces a program called Christian World News. It covers global news from a Christian perspective. And our news bureau is based in Jerusalem, from where our team covers the news from Israel and the Middle East. And I can imagine that if our news bureau had been there at the time of Jesus' death and his resurrection, we would have seen headlines such as, big news, earthquakes in Jerusalem causing mayhem across the city. A massive tombstone was rolled away, angel sighting in the garden of the tomb. Jesus is alive and he first appeared to a woman. Breaking news on the Jerusalem temple. The temple sanctuary curtain torn in two. Sightings of Jesus in numerous places, including the garden tomb, the road to Emmaus and the Sea of Galilee. Imagine the state of Jerusalem as supernatural things started to happen. And when we read the Gospel according to Matthew, we read of a great earthquake on Sunday morning and an angel of the Lord coming down from heaven who rolled aside the gravestone and sat on it. And his face, the Bible says, shone like lightning and made the guards shake with fear up to the point that they fainted. The angel told Mary Magdalene and the other Mary that Jesus had risen from the dead just as he said that it would happen and that he is going ahead of them to Galilee. And not long after, Jesus met with them and greeted them. And their hearts were frightened, but also filled with great joy. And Jesus finds Mary Magdalene first after his resurrection. Mary was a devout follower of Jesus. Her name is mentioned 12 times in the Gospels, more than most of the Apostles. Mary in her past was tormented by seven demons according to the Bible. And Jesus healed her by casting out the demons. We can only imagine how much she must have suffered at the time and how grateful she was to Jesus after he completely healed her and restored her life. She witnesses Jesus' crucifixion and death. I can only imagine how devastated she was that her Lord and teacher had died. The role of women in the time of Jesus had drastically changed for the worse. Women were not allowed to testify in court, which categorized them with Gentiles, minors and the undesirables in the society who were also denied of their privilege. Women were separated from men in private, public and religious life. And in John 4 verse 27, even Jesus' disciples were shocked that he was talking to the woman at the well, but they did not dare to ask Jesus why he was talking with her. And by appearing to Mary, Jesus was making a point that under the new covenant, there is salvation for everyone who believes in him, according to Romans 10 verse 35, which says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that salvation is not just for the Jews, but for everyone, according to Galatians 3 verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male or female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. Besides making this very important announcement to the world, I believe that Jesus saw Mary and her confusion, her doubts, and made it his priority to reassure her, to let her know that he is alive and will never leave or forsake her. He brings her into his own family as he says, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and to your God. Here he confirms her new identity as a child of God, loved by the father. And the good news doesn't stop there. Jesus tells Mary to tell his brothers about the good news. 
She was not to keep this good news to herself, nor would she have wanted to. This was the start of the biggest non-stop newscast about the best news in the whole world, that the way is open to the Father, and this good news is for everyone. In the, in the verses we read from Acts 10, we see God preparing the way for the good news to be shared, and calling two men in separate visions to come together. Peter received a vision from the Lord, and the vision Peter received was a declaration of God's salvation for everyone, not just for Israel and that God does not show favoritism. Then God shared a vision with Cornelius, who was a Roman army officer and a captain of the Italian regiment. He was an honest, God-fearing man, the Bible says, and so was his household. And God told Cornelius to find Peter and invite him. And Peter testifies of this message of the good news for Israel and for the Gentiles, for the world. And passionately he testifies of his own witness of Jesus, who lived, died and rose again and how Jesus appeared to him and other believers after his resurrection. And he shares the message of forgiveness for sins for anyone who believes in Jesus. As a result, Cornelius and, and his household believed the message and the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening. Cornelius and his family were baptized and became one of the first Gentiles that received the promise of eternal life and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And through Jesus, the way to the Father and his eternal kingdom was open again for anyone who believes with no exception. Isn't this amazing? And God sought out Cornelius. He had a plan for his life and the life of his family. God used Peter to share his faith with someone he didn't even know from a different nation, a different culture and a different background. And God appeared to Peter in a vision to show him that we should not call something unclean if God has made it clean. Here God was declaring forgiveness from sin for anyone who believes. And this is the good news that we celebrate today and every day. God does not show favoritism. He calls everyone to accept his son Jesus and receive forgiveness of sins. And when we do, he comes in our hearts and in our lives and he makes everything new again. Gone is the past, the mistakes that we made, the wrong things we did, the slate has been wiped clean because of the sacrifice that Jesus paid for you and for me. Perhaps as you are listening to this message, you already made a decision to follow Jesus a long time ago, but life got in the way. Perhaps you feel weighed down by life and the world around you. Perhaps you've taken your focus off Jesus and you feel like Mary Magdalene when she felt lost and all alone as she was searching for the one who saved her. God wants to remind you today of his overflowing love for you. He conquered sin and death. Is there anything too big for him that he cannot handle? Trust him again today as he wants you to experience his presence today and every day. Perhaps today you're listening and watching this message and you never asked Jesus in your life. Perhaps you feel a little bit like Mary Magdalene before, before she had an encounter with Jesus. She was lost and tormented by seven demons. Jesus came and set her free. Mary found new life and her joy was overflowing. Are there things in your life that hold you back, that shackle you, that keep you captive? Jesus came to set you free and he's welcoming you into his family today. How? Just believe his redeeming work at the cross and invite him as your Lord and your Savior. You won't regret it as he will come and make his home in your heart and bring you new life for now and for always. Perhaps you are like Cornelius, of whom the Bible said he was a God-fearing man, actually doing a lot of good things to people around him. Yet he did not know Jesus, and he did not know about God's love and his forgiveness. And Jesus changed his heart, and he and his household were saved. This was the case for me and my family some 33 years ago. I believed in God, but I did not realize I needed Jesus. It was my mother who reminded me to the verse in John 14, verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I accepted Jesus in my life and it's never been the same again. He has changed my life for good and forever. This is the power of the message of the cross. Jesus is alive today. And as we celebrate his victory over sin and death, Let's step out boldly to share Jesus with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors and live a life of victory today and every day. He is alive 
and he calls us to broadcast his message to a world that is desperate for some good news, for the greatest news in all history. For sharing that with us. Uh, I love the fact that he records it in his garden. Did you like that? I did. I yeah. was amazed Beautiful. he got up early and saw the sunrise. I know that you was... could see the breath coming out of his mouth, couldn't you? It was Pretty still a bit, amazing. Still a bit chilly. What dedication that is. Well, we, I've done about you, but I've been at doing the early service. I was there yeah. at six o'clock over Castle Green with a few of you folk. People this from morning. different churches yeah. gathering. Yeah. It was yeah. Pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Do that. I know but Andy's going to feel it a bit later. Our, on, our Easter services, though, don't kind of stop no. now um, because Just the um, beginning. one of the things we've learned uh, through the work we've been doing supporting people arriving from Ukraine is that the Orthodox Church celebrates Easter a week after we do. So for them, they're celebrating Easter on the 16th of April. So if you've missed Easter celebrations this week, great news. Come and join us next week. 10 o'clock, Upper St. Peter's. It's a special service we do on the third Sunday of the month called Church for All. So you sit around tables. It's a bit more informal. Um, but we're going to be celebrating Christmas with our Ukrainian friends. Um, and, and apparently they're going to be blessing picnic baskets as well and then sharing a picnic afterwards. So Great. there we go. Oh, that's interesting. Make sure you pop up and have a look what's going on. You'll be more than welcome at St. Peter's. Yeah, and, and more celebrations at St. Peter's as well next uh, Sunday because at three o'clock we've got the Mayor's Thanksgiving service. Uh, so it's one of my joys to get to be the chaplain to the Mayor and Hereford City Council. And uh, yeah, every year we give thanks uh, for the service of the Mayor. And uh, so we're going to be doing that, Councillor Mark Dykes. We're going to be honouring him and saying thank you 
for what he's done over the last year. But like I said, you'd be more than welcome at any of our any services. Of our services. Yeah. You check out our Facebook page or our website. Everything's up to date and you will be able to find out what's going on in the life and times of our churches. Absolutely. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, uh, however long's left of it, depending on when you're watching this. And uh, with, there's only one appropriate way yeah, to kind definitely. of finish off we have been practicing our Easter so Sunday service. <laughs> Uh, which is to use the traditional words that we start the service with in person, where I will say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And we all reply, he is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a great Easter Sunday and we'll see you again soon. Take care, everybody.